So firstly, thank you for coming. Um, happy Earth Day to everyone. Um, so I guess we'll go from, from left to right. Um, so who are you um, and what do you do? Like, what is your work? Um, so my name is Pia Bay, um and, and I co-run uh, Kelechi, which is a research agency and collective. And we are basically all about humanizing clothing, but we do that for exhibitions, um, events. Our main thing, our behind the scenes thing is mainly the research. So we do a lot of like, yeah, research and field works. At the moment, our main thing is actually connecting um, the fashion industry with farming, the farm property. So doing a lot of that. Um, then I also co run a platform called Last John, which is a marketplace for settlers, fabric. Doing all. My name is Asia, and I'm designer and co founder of London based brand Omnis. We always say we design ethical fashion for dreamers, sayists, and visionaries. Um, I also work across different projects from bringing in fashion element to wearable tech, um, as well as consulting brands on their production processes. And most recently, I also started offering aftercare or repair services to customers. Um, so yeah, it is a, a very holistic approach to whatever aspects of fashion we can improve using the maker skills. I mean, it um, play uh, brand marketing executive for a lab collective, which is two brands. One is aftercare for like um, clothing, fashion, sneakers, and then the other side is also aftercare for laundry, specialist washes, and everyday washes. So, you have a sustainable, eco, non toxic. <laughs> so, my name is Sky. I run LCB, which is a plant based hair and skincare company. I, um, all my products are luxury based and I'm basically trying to make eco-conscious products while also giving you luxury because I feel like luxury products are very wasteful when it comes to their packaging and I feel like you can do both at the same time without having to waste but also have good looking high-end products. Amazing, amazing. Cool, so I've got, um, I've got some questions here that we're going to go through. Um, and again, I'll probably go left and right and then we'll just open up and just have like a bit more of an open discussion. Um, I feel like you've probably um, covered off a lot of this, but what, I guess, prompted your focus on sustainability um, and sort of like how and why is it important to you? Yeah. I was actually thinking about that question. And I was like, the focus has become such a buzzword in sustainability, but um, I was just going back to why, like how I started that journey. And for me, actually, it started when, so I was at a point because my background or career has been in digital marketing. So... You know that there's that trap you fall into where it's like you earn more and you spend more. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I'm spending a lot of money on clothes and a lot of the clothes are rubbish. And I found buying things and I'm like, this it doesn't maybe it doesn't fit properly. Um and I remember spending a little bit more or maybe um I was still on the high street at the time, but like high uh, like better quality stuff that had just meant a bit and thinking actually I would prefer to spend a little bit more on clothes that fit properly. The last time. But my thinking at that time was actually, I need to save money, I'm just going to stop buying clothes. So yeah. a bit to do sustainability was just... It's kind of fed into it. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I think, I don't know, somehow it's probably just social media. And then I, I started, I discovered like, it was mainly a group called Fashion Revolution and they do a lot of work about... Um, the global south and um, government workers rights and stuff like that and I was like oh fashion is part of this big problem um so then as well as not buying to save money it also became a thing where I stopped buying and uh, bought less because I was just more aware of the effects that uh, fashion has on I guess people communities and also the fact that it's not necessarily like it's well, everything's happening in the west but then there's a lot of injustice or misjustice happening where we come from all issue um and just thinking wow it's actually our people's movement really but it's but we're not really speaking about or maybe we don't know enough about it so i think that's probably my drive where i, I do feel there's a huge disconnect between how our clothes are made what's happening and then these we're literally just spending spending on really bad clothes bad quality then we're sending it back to ask them for Asia, I mean, that they have to deal with our men's and it just doesn't make sense. Right, yeah. I feel like now it's all fueled by just the injustice of it all, but also, um, yeah, just, I, I feel like I feel better knowing like one of my clothes and the kicks on my worth just wearing it as 
treat your wardrobe like almost like an art collection. So it's like you should know every piece that you have. And if you're going to buy something, you can know why you're buying it, but just buy it for the sake of it. Even if you are just going to buy a 20 pound dress, you know why you're buying it and, sure. and, and aim to keep it for as long as you can. Um, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's a great story. And uh, Asha? Yeah, I I was thinking about this as well. Uh, for uh, because every time someone asks me about sustainability, it's a, like it's such a Western wor- world problem. Mm. Being from Armenia, growing up in Armenia, not having the luxury of even having access to high street, I was not quite sure where the problem was and how I would fit in this whole system and understand understanding it from more maker's perspective. So I came to fashion as a maker. Um, I really liked making clothes and um, I would cut old things and turn them into something remotely wearable. Mm -hmm. So seeing this, my parents took me to like sewing clubs, sewing workshops, and I started making things like properly since the age of 10. And the fashion revolution moment actually was in like at at Uprise when I was a student in 2013, when the factory collapsed, I was doing my foundation at the CSM. And I think this was this link between me clothes the problems because i am not really a consumer i don't buy much that many clothes anyway i would make a lot of my clothes already at that point but i do relate to the maker and when i see the wage for example a maker is paid i i'm like oh wow okay so me being in london doing the exact same thing i would be paid 25 pounds an hour for example as a seamstress but if i just myself the same skill level located somewhere else in global south, my rate would instantly become several keys uh, um, um, an hour. Yeah. And it's it's really interesting how people perceive fashion. And I think um, m- my mission in a way is to speak about uh, how long something takes to make, how many steps are involved, how many decisions are made. And it's like fashion is never seen as a serious thing. It's a frivolous feminine industry. Um, so there has to be that shift of the way we see it, um, not only in the environmental sense, but also psychological sense. And I think you have made some valid points about why people buy things. And this is always overlooked in sustainable conversations, like why why do we see something as cool and yeah. not cool? And why did we not see sustainable as cool before? And why is it even a topic we are here to discuss? You know, so yeah, it's it's and interesting. I am still on a tour. <laughs> So yeah, amazing. I guess um yeah, Lee, I guess maybe more in terms of like sneakers and you know, sneaker collecting and aftercare in terms of that, like what's your experience been like with sustainability and being in the sneaker culture and working for Liquid Roof? Yeah, um really cool. Uh I've, we've always been like researching I know ways like for packaging, like you said. Um packaging, um even like how the materials that we use, um, what the stuff is made of and it's a it's an ongoing thing because we're always trying to research for better ways the new things that are coming out and just i guess like with the you know, with traders being something that people collect and may even wear once or may not wear at all it's like it's, it's such a high consumption in the industry right um i see a lot not a lot more now of like places that are like cleaning old shoes and stuff like so that's really good to see you know like the work you guys are doing and stuff um but yeah and, and, and sky how about yourself so eco freaking was nothing that I actually thought about when I went into my brand. It wasn't something I knew much about. Um, and I was younger, I've got ASD, which is um, basically autism spectrum disorder. So I have a very, um, like my morals, I'm very keen on like doing good and whatever. So once I was in primary school, I was that kid when all of that recycling stuff came out, it was like neat posters and then I was in in that I was always telling my dad don't throw rubbish on the floor make sure you put this in the bin make sure you do this like do you know what I mean from young it was something I actually thought about when I started my brand however once I actually got into the industry I started looking into luxury products I can't remember I think it was actually Kylie Jenner someone who has like a makeup line in the Kardashians yeah. and they released like these new lip glosses and they came in a hot box and there was so much like unnecessary pathogen <laughs> it's just sad all of that is gonna go in a bit like every single piece of that like nothing of that is even like you can keep it and mm. make it into a pencil case or you can put your little badges or something in it it wasn't nothing it could be kept it's literally just cardboard mm. and they made like a whole heart that you unfold all of this just to put two small lip glosses that are about this thing 
in the middle. And I was like, why does it need to be used so much packaging to make something luxury? People actually really enjoy, like, it's an experience to come. I have a 250 pound um, hair bundle, which contains like most of my products in it. People love opening that. They love opening the envelopes. They've got tissue paper, all of that stuff. Every single thing in that box can be recycled mm -hmm. or it's biodegradable. And you've been still enjoyed the experience of opening that as a luxury brand. Mm -hmm. So why do we need to go down the route of everything to be either wasteful, it can't be reused, or it's not recyclable or whatever. You can still do both. Something can look nice. It can give a customer a great experience and also be like eco-conscious or biodegradable at the same time. So I've been able to kind of link the two, make luxury cosmetics, not something that is boring to look at, but also that you, you're you not basically destroying the environment at the same time. But there's no, even like plant-based products, I'm very keen on the environment and very keen on what I do, even down to like sourcing my ingredients. Then when you was talking about people being um, undercharged, my castle bill beans, they are literally picked from a tree by an African lady and we're not getting paid. Mm. So I make sure that I go and I look at where I'm sourcing my ingredients. When I'm sourcing my ingredients from Africa, Mexico, India, the people on the other end are also getting paid. Mm. So just me that's receiving the money on this side, yeah. it's also the people who have got to get it from A to B and the people have got like basically sourced the ingredients in the first place. So the very lack, not just packaging, but also making sure that I'm being um, ethical on the side of people are getting paid correct wages for what they are doing to provide for the UK mm -hmm. and hair and skincare. Like they've got the ingredients out there, but they're literally slaving away to give it to the UK when they can go in their garden and get shit bar and make exactly what I'm making over here mm -hmm. to add it to charge whatever and they're getting paid nothing for it. No, that's really uh really noble. I think like having that transparency in your in your supply chain as well is really really good and I think something that more people should adopt. Um so I guess I'm just going to open some more open questions and feel feel free to chime in and, and add anything. But um, so I think so in your in your personal opinion, like what are the most pressing issues facing the planet right now? It could be sort of environmental, could be sort of in terms of like waste, uh, could be specific to your industry. But uh, yeah, what do you think at the moment is like the most pressing thing? Um, in I guess yeah. Well, I mean, anyone anything you know? Those cases when uh, when the bipolar thinking we have in most subjects nowadays mm -hmm. is reflected also in the environmental discussions. Because being like quite fortunate to hang out with this bubble, I am mostly in the sustainable fashion scene, and I, my illusion often is that everyone knows, everyone is working, everyone is fixing, and then I'll go, for example, on TikTok, and it will be like. A, a typical Gen Z, which is supposed to be an eco-conscious shopper, according to all the research, doing like a haul from um, in the uh, cheap uh, bread, like Buko, she yeah. leper. And, um, and I, again, I'm not judging anyone here. It's more like an open question of like, how or why does that happen? Um, and we know there are lots of studies on this, that the world is quite bipolar in terms of like information at the moment and the social media playing a very important and vital role in dividing us or grouping us mm. in certain ways. And this comes across in all aspects of um, in, in some countries more, in some countries less. But I think it's really important to acknowledge this, that like, if I know that uh, we need to buy less, it doesn't mean this girl on TikTok knows it. And how do I connect with her and how do I make it clear for her in her language? Mm -hmm. It's a tricky one, right? Because I don't know what's her income, what's her aspiration. Again, the emotional aspect of buying, why is she doing what she's doing? All these things are being overlooked. So I think in pointing one problem would be like the lack of connection between yeah. the different aspects of. Yeah, that no, no, makes sense. I guess that, that leads nicely into sort of, um, I guess, how do you see consumer attitudes changing um, so in regards to uh, sort of sustainability and eco friendliness? Um, and do you have any suggestions for sort of how companies might respond um, to sort of the changing attitude? So, you know, like if if it's, um, you know, like runway fashion where it's sort of um, seasonal and then like at the end of season, like next season, 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 it's like what can, what can people do to sort of like combat the waste that's being produced or again, like sneakers or uh, even just like toxicity in products and like you're saying, like um, transparency in supply chains, what things can sort of companies do now to sort of like combat the issue in hand? 
for the Africa bit, that's that's what L Brown focuses on. Mm -hmm. Like pieces that you purchase, that you look after so that you have them for a longer time. But then you wear it a couple of times, and then you get it the way it was. So we're definitely um, part of that to make sure that the items last as long as possible. <clears throat> but with sustainability right now, there's lots of people that want to do it. But at the price point, that's a lot of the stuff. It's just, it's just like very difficult because you'll have something that's say like 12 pound and you can get something that does the same thing for like five pound. Mm -hmm. It might not be eco-friendly, but due to the prices right now, that five pound is going to go a lot more than you can eco. So that's the, the balance that's very rich. Yeah. Can I really the point that it should be like it's a very... So I'm young, I'm 19. So as a teenager, I know exactly what you mean when it comes, especially to young people. There's a stigma I'd say out that there's been put out about eco, like being eco-conscious. You're saying obviously about price points. You can always go to a charity shop. You can always go and free it. But there is a, especially for my age, there is a stigma around that basically like doing that kind of puts you in a type of group. And a lot of people don't like that stigma in a sense. And it's like, how can we move away from it being like kind of uncool to shop like eco-friendly when it's like really and truly we don't want the planet to go the way that we like it is going you know what i mean everyone's complaining but no one's actually putting in for small things like literally just how it makes you look image wise i am very big into fashion as much as i am not it's not my um brand i enjoy the fashion industry like people always come to me oh what can i wear for my birthday i'm gonna put an outfit together for them but it's like people come to me and they'll be like oh my god like i love your jeans and i'm like do you love my jeans? Because once I tell you where they're from, are you going to then kind of side at me? Because it would be like, okay, cool. Your jeans are nice. I'm like, yeah, I got them for a charity shop. Mm. And it's like, but you liked them. So yeah. why was it a problem? Get your washing machine that work at home. They yeah, just to make the jeans home. And, because when you're taking hand me downs with your cousin, it's not a problem. If your cousin was to drop it to the charity shop and you was to pop in and get it after him, it, it doesn't change anything. And I feel like, yeah, it's like really a lot of teenagers... This is why I was even mentioning about going to schools. There is a really big stigma on like being eco-friendly. It's like, it's not cool. And we are the next generation and we do need to be taught that it's not about being cool, it's about saving the planet. Because mm -hmm. if we keep up this way, my kids, the kids after that, they're not gonna be in a good position, what? Because I didn't want to go charity shop. It doesn't make sense. I really love the point you made because I had this um, discussion a few years ago. Actually, I was on the uh, sustainability panel back um, at LCF, Learn Culture Passion. And I said this, uh, I said, someone said, oh, they can buy e thrift store. And I said, well, I never, uh, coming from the culture I come, again, this is not, doesn't mean for everyone, but you either look down on it. Oh, yeah, this is Andre, but please, if I let's tell my nana for it, the five second position, she's not an illiterate. We would be not for the 70 years of Soviet Union where we couldn't have this off the shelf. Can we just go and get it now? Because I'm saying I can look at my same immigrant grandparents who had no money, but you now, now you've come to the UK, you've been westernized. And it's like, it doesn't even make sense. Because back, like, back in Jamaica, you're not back to those things. You was happy for anything. Any tenor down t-shirt that you can wear is better than not having no clothes, bro. Exactly, the barrel that you're taking from the UK. The same barrels you want me to send on my leftover clothes, but it's okay for me to send it, but it's not okay for someone else. It, it, it's so, like, so, so backwards. Correct. The thing with fashion, it's like people always um, bring it all down to a level of just, oh, we need clothes, like as um, pieces to not be naked. And, you know, but it's not that case, right? Because that's why there's like so much studies around the social anthropological side of fashion and they, they are actually academics who write about this which is a bit weird but they trace it back and they try to map habits and they try to understand why certain tribes dress certain way mark their um yeah it's lazy is there a way to set that just it's very specific um element of our identities and bringing it down to just being, oh, this is organic fabric that had um, less water used to go away, but it's ugly, I don't know. Uh, that, no, so it's, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting things you said there, and I definitely agree, and it, it's called... Yeah. But I definitely think it's also, I think there's so much emphasis on the consumer doing everything, and I think it gets to a certain point where okay, we're people living here and yes, we, like I can, like, I guess we've all chosen in our way to do something different. And the, what we're almost trying to say is everyone kind of needs to find their way of doing the small thing. 
But realistically, it's not our job as individuals to do that influencing. And I guess what's happening is that brands, they have taught us how to buy. And it's interesting with the whole shopping thing. I feel like they've done they've done it with purpose, where it's like they've kind of actually put that stigma out to make it that they that's their marketing. Yeah. And they've forced consumers to change their mind on how things actually work. That the same issue, either down to my products of there being certain things in the hair and skincare industry, which are like physically, this is not true. But a consumer will come to me and argue with me about about things, and it's like it doesn't make sense because you actually don't know what you're talking about. This is all just a marketing. Marketing is as and put you in this position, and you're falling straight for it. Yeah. You think you're going around, no, 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 but you are. And yeah, I think like it's literally, it has to be almost a, we can do so much, think from the bottom down, all we can do is scream and shout saying this. To get the big people to basic, to this as, yeah, to do stuff. And because we can only do so much, yeah, as we're true. I guess like with, with your work, um, with uh, Last Yarn, is, do you, do you think a lot of it's on the sort of, you know, the businesses that have these practices in place then are sort of need to adapt and sort of re readjust their supply chains or the ways that they're working? Um, how, you know, that like the work that you're doing, um, selling, so I'm arriving, you sort of sell surplus uh, materials and um, how do you, do you sell? Is it, is it to consumer? Is it, you sell it to brands? It's essentially resell. So it's basically, it's a bit like, a, I guess it's a bit like a Depop, for example, where mm-hmm. it's, a brand would have loads of surplus yeah. and then they even put it on the, the website and then they said it so people would then buy. Um, but again, that's another really interesting thing because I was having this conversation with another lady the other day and she, but comment, but she basically has some sort of AI platform that she explained what it is. <laughs> uh, not, but basically we were talking about how like what consumers, and she was saying, oh, one of her biggest challenges is the marketing of it mm-hmm. and what people really care about. And at the end of the day, people just care about, can I make money from this? If I put my fabrics on your platform, will it make money? Or can I buy fabrics? Yes, no. Like it's in terms of the consumer's thinking, it's very simplistic mm-hmm. in terms of will it do what I want it to do? And I think, especially with like the Amazons where I had, you can literally get something tomorrow. Mm. Everyone is competing against this convenience and all of that that people feel like they want. Mm. So it's so it's so we were kind of just thinking that like in terms of the messaging and with us we're quite lucky because at the moment everything is UK based. So we can actually you can get fabrics in two days. Mm. And it's crazy because it's that's what people care about as opposed to is it eco, is it sustainable? Like is it is it dead stock? Oh, we don't even like the word dead stock. So we didn't have like really neat. And like, so there's all of this backlash where you start to talk about sustainable things. Mm-hmm. Because maybe there's a bit where people don't really understand it or where people assume that if you're sustainable, you have to be good 100% of the time. So there's almost no room to, I don't want to say make mistakes, but there's no room to, to give other information. Mm-hmm. If we need on, you can get your fabrics in two days. And they don't care if we're true. It we're kind of in London. That's the worst part, right? love to do is introduce things like maybe cycling bikes depending on how local things are but it's yeah it's kind of what customers want and what you're telling them versus what they're doing um mm. whilst we're obviously in the back end making it as like trying to be like use the right for transport or whatever or we're trying to be as eco as even the thing as possible in terms of just being sustainable because I think people forget that financial sustainability all plays a role in intimate as well. So like, what's your business model? Mm. Yeah, and I said, what's your business model and, and how will it get from A to B without, you know, because at the end of the day, if we can't think, oh, wonder how the planet revolves for wanting to live a good life. I don't even know if it's just right there. And I just think for people have to get that, like you were saying, people have to get paid for these things and, mm. and, and there's a cost to everything. And if you're trying, when you're trying to do things the right way, Sometimes there's a bit more of a cost because you're not taking shortcuts. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. I don't... It's awkward, right? Because, yeah, yeah, for, I'm just thinking about it, right? Because it's like, you know, in a, in a time we're at now where it's like of the utmost importance, right? Everyone needs to be more eco-focused and stuff, but then also no one's got any money at the moment. So it's like, if I have to spend more to be uh, obtaining this. You both. Right, yeah. I don't and truck. That message, because even what you said about charity shops, because even one thing that we're always talking about um, 
through Kalechi is the fact that there's loads, even within our team ourselves, when we think about the way we all dress as individuals, everyone has their own individual style, but I think everyone's got to the point where they're super comfortable with being a little bit wacky, wacky. Well, I'm aware of this because I, I feel comfortable with it. And sh- I guess we also have to appreciate that not everyone gets to that stage either very quickly or as easily because I guess we're taught to just wear and like look this way, look that way, follow the trend. Yeah. But then it gets to a point where you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to wear what what I want. But everyone within the team swimsuits their clothes very differently. So like you were saying, I remember I'm literally coming in to work and being like, oh, I just found this scarf for one pound. Or like, me like, oh, that's a really nice shirt. Where'd you get it from? Oh, it was literally three pounds at the charity shop. Mm. And you're like, wow. So I think there's that whole thing of sustainability equals expensive and I can mm-hmm. some and I think a lot of the time yes it is if you want to if you want to pay for like really well-made tailored clothing but you have to remember that's a completely different market but then there's also a more lower end market um and you don't and it doesn't have to be the products but it can be like you can find really nice things if you go to the rifle sure. auto shops in that area where yeah. yeah yes there's there's one guy that used to come into the design exchange I used to work at and he works for Louis Vuitton now. He used to go to all these charity shops and but like not saying which charity shop he was going to because he would always be finding like steals like Louis Vuitton purses and, and duffels and all this like things that I I guess people wouldn't look at. But he would know what they are because he would he was a Louis Vuitton fan and he would be making back off this stuff. But those kind of people are not going to tell uh, yeah, no, 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 no. because then that's more people going and you know that that pool of stuff is getting smaller and smaller so i think maybe that might play a part of um the people that are not like big enough charity shops because that you know everyone yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. well even like what, what do you guys think from like this whole like rental uh sort of services that people are doing as of like that as we spoke about like wanting more variety and uh, being more fashionable but being sustainable as being definitely one of the options but i also question i saw recently because of the earth day and uh, fresh revolution we coming up some of the rental platforms were like putting up the their impact basically and i was questioned like how did they measure it? they're saying we saved this much water this much forest of a bond like how actually measure it like i'm really curious not that maybe it's true facts yeah. but how how did you measure it because it's really hard to tell how many times someone was planning to wash that sequencer is anyway <laughs> and then it went on to rental let's say 100 times and then we're like okay so it didn't get washed it wasn't going to be washed in the first place but let's say it would be five times so i question these things that i think there's like a big gray area where even good businesses are trying to use the eco-narrative to push forward, yes, and it's... They're using it to basically make more money. Yeah, yeah. And, and I jump on it as well. With customer, again, confusing yeah, and it was narrative because I uh, it, with the aftercare, for example, I'm sure you also experienced this. People will come in and they have um, they have an expectation how much something would need to cost, for example. Mm-hmm. And this is highly influenced by what the cheap brands were doing before right so for example they'll bring in g's and they'll want it i don't know shortened or repaired you'll give them the price and they're like oh wow that's expensive like the 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 g's itself was and they will name like half the price of the hourly wage that is uh, the minimum wage in this country so and, and i really don't know how to navigate this conversation because initially i was feeling guilty that i want to be paid like <laughs> nothing or anything but then how to do you make it clear to them how long something takes where did the price come from that it is in fact wrong that the jeans were in the first place the price. 10 pl- 10 pound price so that now repairing them yes actually costs more yeah. than uh buying new pairs so this these are interesting conversation and again going back to what i said earlier i'm not sure everyone is having yeah i on from that i actually deal with this a lot in my industry um a lot of people are coming across now um I think it was Dell actually. Um, they released a spray, like a cleaning spray. On the front of the thing, they've got a big green label that says "Made from farm-based ingredients." You read at the bottom, there's a little fine print that says "fine print" that basically says that the ingredients are naturally derived, which means yes, they may have come from a plant to begin with, but they've been synthetically processed. But you're now someone is going to go and spend seven pound on that one. 
over the other one, even though both of them contain synthetic ingredients. One of them was just plant-based once. It was a black one, but it's no longer plant-based. So that contains all the same chemicals that you put in the first one, but charged seven pounds for it. Then same thing with me, with my products. The hair shop, the hair shop will fill their products with like terrible ingredients. None of their workers are being paid correctly. Anything like that, the packaging they're using is not biodegradable, nothing. And then people come to me, well, I can get six pound hair care cream in, in, in the hair shop. And I'm like, did, did they stand there for four hours and, and make your conditioner by hand? Did they source ingredients from someone who is not getting exploited? Did they go out and find eco-friendly labels to put on the thing that you can recycle the tub and the label afterwards? No, they didn't. But you're then going to come and complain at me and tell me I'm overcharging when I'm not even getting paid the minimum wage to make sure everything else is done. Yeah, um, I think there's definitely something with um, the disconnect with where things come from because even through Kalechi we're working on this journal where we're talking about farming and fashion and it's interesting because whenever we say that people are like, what? And then we're like, yeah, but if you're wearing anything wool that came from a sheep and then there's this whole thing of like vegan leather and um, sheep wool being bad because sheep are killed when actually they're killed for me, but they have to be sheared every black. There's a lot of, exactly, it has to be taken off the bow. That's what you can't say. She's like, and then, and like, well, that wool and sent this great, it created this area for high street to say, oh, it's. But in the outside, leave the wall on the sheep. The sheep is going to be abused. It, it, it cannot move with all of that fur like, on it. It never wear like that. Yeah. It has to be shaved. So it's this whole thing of like, we were just thinking, because with the whole journal idea, we we're just thinking, how can we say this? Because I also feel like when we live in a city, um, you're almost disconnected from nature. And nature often, it almost feels like, oh, I have to be, or you have to be a certain type of person that you don't want to be perceived as being a bit like what you were saying when like, oh, I shop at a charity shop. People will think I'm that. If I'm in love with nature, people would assume I'm a tree hugger. Like all the Disney have to it. And then you just think, but it's just, it's like, I see it as it's almost common sense, like to the point where I remember when I'm all hourly, that during lockdown, my aunt's like, but, um, I'm gonna, there's like an amazing sale happening at Dr. Martin, you should buy something, you should buy something. And I was just like, oh, it's just like, I'm sending you money, buy something. And I was just like, and then I saw they had a vegan leather shoes and I was like, what is vegan leather? And then like, I, it didn't really make sense in my head. And then when I looked into it, they were like, oh, this shoe is made out of plastic. It's not, they didn't say plastic, but when I did more research, I realized it was plastic. But then for the idea of it's a process, yeah, they they kind of made it sound in like non-animal based material. The f- no wording, filthy. They all said nothing. Fancy <laughs> <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's a lot of crit, but I was like, but what is this made out of? And they're able to get away with literally just saying that, and they can just put it's vegan leather. And then everyone's like, well, this is good because it's vegan. And now there's a whole debate saying, oh, vegan doesn't, like, it's confusing them mm-hmm. like, with things as vegan because vegan has so many different meanings. It could either mean the animal wasn't harmed or it could be not animal based. So it, it's this whole thing where as humans, we almost don't question things. Like if you see something, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I, if someone told me that this is made out, I don't know, this table's made up of apples. Mm-hmm. Like, there are some people be like, oh my God, it's made up of apples. So it's all marketing, right? I think that's bad. Oh, they were legal fools, like straight for marketing. And, it's, and then they believe that they're not. You know, they're arguing your face to see, but they don't so prove. You see the, we see the same thing like, you see the same thing like health and fitness, right? Where people are like, oh, protein, source of protein on this. And it's like, well, yeah, bro, it's chicken. It's got protein. <laughs> it was like, it was like, hey, protein, it's a cheese. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, you just, it's always had proteins in it. <laughs> now you're just slapping it on in the, yeah, man, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's my very when it's like stuff and an upcoming desire says like we'll be hand make all our clothes and we're like Oh yeah, I guess more like a, a nice way to finish up could just be like, I don't know, maybe sort of uh, a tip or maybe something people should know about, people should avoid doing, um any advice for anyone, just like a little quick piece of uh advice for anyone that you know it could be a, it could be a customer it could be a client it could just be anyone in general anyone that's listening uh you know, who wants to start <laughs> um, could be a brand that people need to know about they're doing something could be could be anything so i thought like i'm just going to take information that I... shout out yourself man shout out yourself <laughs> <laughs> 
everyone mm. for <laughs> that connection. Um, but yeah, I think it probably is. I would probably say it's a basic thing, but looking at your clothes label, when you get your clothes, just look at the label and question it. I think that's like a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And and really question it, like really wonder like, oh, it says 40% polyester and 6% or like question labels and you'll see where it's made. There's a lot of information actually on clothing labels. so I'll say that, but actually from, because we were talking about taking up space in London a few uh, days ago. And I think one thing that uh, we were just saying is actually embed yourself in, in your community. So like learn how to sew, find out who's doing. I remember learning how to sew literally down the road. I think oh, yeah. Peckham, it's like, Pe- it's like a community space, yeah. place, but it's like Peckham, it's like one by council. Not Peckham, no wars. It's literally, I, I think it's called Cod, the the... It's through Southern Council and you can just literally learn all of these skills for next to nothing, like really cheap. Yeah. Like I learned, I did like a sewing course, but they had all sorts of courses, like probably have gardening in there and like, all sorts of stuff. But I would just say learn, learn. Educate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Time to sew, but make the effort to, to see what's happening in there. For that linking onto yours, my one's actually going to be quite similar. I'll say, actually just look at like, as you were saying, actually look at the source of things like find out where thing that things you actually find whether it be hair and skincare or whatever or clothes or furniture or whatever actually just look where it comes from mm-hmm. so i feel like a lot of the time if you actually look where it comes from you start to learn a lot more about either the ingredients that we put in it where it's being sourced and then you actually learn about most of the time the workers that are being exploited on the back end if you start oh actually this was made here blah 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 and you start looking into it even though it's like ingredients in hair and skincare my whole brand was started because of toxic ingredients being used in hair and skincare for marketing purposes so you continue to keep buying the products right. and you look into actual half the stuff they tell you but you don't actually pay attention to it they will tell you that they're robbing you blind they will tell you that they're giving you toxic chemicals they'll tell you that they're exploiting people but it's just are you actually paying attention like looking into it just literally source look at the source of the things yeah. is there anything that you would advise people look out to stay away from uh it'd be a, you know like, like country or something yeah, <laughs> i could say if i could say i called a brand i to stop buying Cantu. Cantu is i don't even know what to Cantu needs to be sued that, that, that. <laughs> i could actually go and make a lawsuit with pictures of what you did to my hair and um, you've caused hair loss in way 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 too many people like people the ingredients in that, they're, they're not good. Just, yeah, stay clear from county. Right. Uh, yeah, there was some strong... <laughs> no, no. And once you've done what the, you were already advised, like uh, getting to know your communities, asking questions, I think try to look after what you already have. Because I think you probably have enough. And even if you need something, it's going to be one thing or two things. Mm-hmm. I'm with things. Um, and the next thing would be try not to be super. And this I'm saying to myself, mm-hmm. that, try to not to be super idealistic because you can't do it all. Like you can't be vegan, dairy free, also not short, whatever. Well, live in the middle of nowhere and never have well, the low carbon footprint and all that all at once. And if you do a little bit of everything, that will still have a grand impact if you've built communities around <laughs> and do it all together. So yeah, come join us, our community. <laughs> Shit, that's great. I mean, try to do something. And start somewhere. Somewhere, like that's it. Start somewhere. Okay. Right, want to add that. start somewhere. I, I started because uh, my mom came home one day with uh, a recycle, um, a reusable straw, that silver straw. I was like, what the hell is that? And literally, she started at Eco Gen, and I, was, I just went on with her. Um, so, start somewhere. Uh, I've got to plug the brand, of course. Mm-hmm. No, look after your shoes, protect them, then they last way long. They're same for your clothing. Um, mists, uh, laundry detergents, and then just look after your stuff. Mm. And goes way, way around it. Anything, um, you know, people, uh, be it sort of behavioral, anything, anything people shouldn't do, you know, is it like the people that 
wear their shoes once and then like you know they throw them away or something is there is there anything uh you know that, that... i mean again so um if you look after your shoes you can resell them so i resell my older shoes um and if i can resell them then just for pound you can either yourself <laughs> so him the shoes <laughs> like can be to be part of hip work <laughs> yeah um, I don't make no picture, I think. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, for sure, it, it, it depends on it. <clears throat> cool. It reminded me of a story I was told recently. A friend of mine was walking the street in their neighborhood and they saw some Nike sneakers. Someone was uh, giving away. He took it and he sold it on Facebook Market. Look at that, I'm coming in. So be resourced in the maze. It's circular. I all call it something. Uh, well, thanks, guys. That's been really, uh, really insightful. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, yeah, everyone, everyone check out their individual businesses and brands and them. And so they're great people doing great work. Fuck.